Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Welcome. I'm glad for this chance to be together online and uh, enjoy the service today. I pray that God will bless it and bless you and bless us in this time together. Let's start with our scripture reading. It comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. And it says there, That day when the evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in a boat. And there were also other boats with him. And a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. And Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. And the disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Jesus got up rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and was completely calm. And Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and they asked each other, Who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? May God add his blessing to our reading and hearing of his holy word. You know, in the Bible, there's a lot of fear. Heck, there's a lot of fear in literature and in media everywhere around us. There's just a lot of things to be afraid of, and we, we see it all around us every day. In our passage today, Jesus asks his fellow travelers, Why are you afraid? In the passage that we're going to look at next week, in Mark chapter 5, Jesus asked the same question, why are you afraid, uh, to a young man. So, you know, come to think of it, Jesus spends a lot of time talking about fear and dealing with people's fear. Fear of storms, fear of disease, fear of death, fear of other people, fear of abandonment. I want to ask today, what's your biggest fear? What keeps you up at night? So I'm guessing that for most of us, that's a two-part question. Most of us could call out the thing that we're afraid of that is a forever fear, like fear of snakes, or fear of spiders, or fear of flying, or fear of public speaking, or fear of losing your password. But I'm also going to guess that there are many of us that also have a present fear, a fear that we have today that we didn't have yesterday, and another fear we might have tomorrow that we didn't have today. The fear of that thing that's going on with our child or parent or best friend. The fear of the doctor's visit that we have later this week. The fear of the job interview that we're going to have on Friday. The fear of how our spouse is going to react to the conversation that we need to have. 
And that's, that's what I meant earlier by there being a lot of things to be afraid of. It's, it's sort of a constant in our lives, isn't it? Well, I think that's what Jesus is trying to address right here. This event on the water creates the opportunity for Jesus to help the disciples and even help you and me try to figure out this problem of fear. And Mark's recreation of the scene on the water and the questions that are asked, hopefully that'll be a big help to us as we look at it. So let's, let's jump into the Scripture. The storm is out of control, it says, and Jesus is asleep, and they have to wake him. The disciples had hoped that Jesus would wake up by himself. It says the waves were coming over and into the boat. Surely some of the waves splashed onto Jesus. I'm sure the disciples were wondering, why isn't he waking up? Doesn't he know the boat's about to sink? They wondered how in the world he could sleep through something like this. Well, finally, the disciples can't wait any longer because they're afraid. So they wake Jesus up, and then they ask this question, don't you care that we are drowning? Don't you care, some versions say, that we are perishing? Um, And so it puts it in the present tense. We are drowning. We are perishing. And don't you care? Isn't that really the question that we get a lot? Someone around us is afraid. They're struggling with something, some issue, some problem, some uh, concern, and they're trying to tell us about uh, what it is that they're afraid of. And then we don't respond appropriately, or we don't respond the way they were hoping that we would respond. And so the question they ask us is, don't you care? Don't you care about me? Well, of, of course Jesus cares. Which makes this question really interesting because, of course, Jesus cares. Just go back and read John 3.16. In fact, go back and read everything in the Bible up until this point, uh, and you'll see, yes, of course Jesus cares. That's not even a real question. So it's interesting how Mark is using this and putting it in this uh, context of this story. But it's still the question that you and I have. It's the universal question. God, don't you care? (laughs) Jesus, don't you care? Don't you see us? Isn't that the question behind our why questions of God? Why do you let people suffer? Why don't you act? Why do you allow this to happen? God, don't you care? Jesus, don't you care? God, can't you see what's happening here? God, can't you see me? Do you know that I'm here? Why don't you intervene? And then when we ask that question, it's interesting how our logic, our human logic, takes that. It's it's in this story, and it's in our daily sort of struggle with fear. If God you cared, then you would f- fill in the blank. You would, you would answer my uh, concern. You would uh, break through the silence. You would act on, on my behalf. If God cared, we think, then God would do what we demand or want or expect. Isn't that how our logic works? If God really cared, then God would do what we want God to do. And we base the proof of God's compassion on our expectations. Wow, that's kind of the height of arrogance, isn't it? Besides that, it's just bad theology. It's also not fair to God or to Jesus, just like it's also not fair to our child or our parent or our spouse or our friend when we don't respond to their crisis the way they want us to respond. It seems that Jesus actually knows 
that the question being asked is being asked in a time of panic, and so he doesn't even answer the question. He doesn't address it. Do you notice that in the, in the scripture that we read? Jesus just kind of glosses over it, and what he does is he stands up and he tells the wind to be quiet. He tells the waves to calm down. Everything goes to calm. The disciples are looking at Jesus, and Jesus is standing there. The seas return to the calmness, and everybody just goes, Oh my gosh, look at that. Wow. So I guess the question at that point for the disciples was, Does that prove that he cared? He made them safe. They were afraid. Now they're safe and at peace and the storm is calm. So does that prove that Jesus did care? And is that the only way he could prove to them that he cared? Would they say to Jesus now, oh, look, you really do care. The storm is gone. And they would turn to each other. Look, see how much Jesus cares about us. He calmed the storm. I guess he really does care about us a lot. See, the expectations we have uh, that we put on Jesus, and if he doesn't measure up, then we don't think that he cares. So it's interesting, the whole sequence of things, but it doesn't stop there. It keeps going because Jesus then turns to the disciples and he asks them two questions. He says, why are you afraid? And then he says, have you no faith? Why are you afraid and have you no faith? Well, if he was asking me and I was on that boat, I would have said that the answer to the first question is, why are you afraid? I would have said, because we're human. (laughs) Because we're human. We're in a boat in the middle of a sea and it looks like it's going to capsize and we're all going to drown. I'm human and I'm afraid. The second question that Jesus asks is, have you no faith? And so my response to that question would have been, Jesus, are you seriously asking me if I should have stood up and calmed the waves myself? Are you really asking if one of the other disciples should have stood up and calmed the waves? Is that something you really expect us to do? So just to be clear, kind of an aside, Jesus did not expect them to calm the storm. Jesus did not expect them to uh, show that kind of power. That's not behind the question that Jesus asked. But I want to look at what is behind the questions that Jesus asked. Back at the start of our conversation here a couple of minutes ago, we talked that there is a lot of fear. We live in fear. We live uh, with fear as a constant companion. If it isn't the snakes or the spiders or the flying or the speaking kind of fear, then it's the constant daily drama that unfolds in our lives that gets us all knotted up. And that is all of what Jesus is trying to address with both of his questions and also his response to the disciples' question. Yes, (laughs) yes, I care. You'll see in a few years how much I care when you see me hanging on the cross. And you'll see how much I care even more a couple of days later when I open the tomb and walk out. I care. I care about you even more than you care about yourselves. And I care that you're living in a constant state of fear when you could live in a state of peace and of joy and of hope. When Jesus says, are you afraid and have you no faith? I think that he's saying your faith, when it's better developed, will allow you to live in a in a state of hope and of joy, that you'll be able to live happier and healthier. 
Because see, Jesus isn't focused on the storm. He's focused on what's beyond the storm. Jesus isn't focused on the cancer. He's focused on what's beyond the cancer. Jesus isn't focused on death. He's focused on what's beyond death. Jesus isn't focused on betrayal. <laughs> He's focused on what's beyond betrayal. Jesus isn't focused on rejection. He's focused on what's way beyond the rejection. One of the songs we're singing today is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What have I to dread? What? Have I to fear? That's a question that the author of the song answers by saying nothing because we're leaning on the everlasting arms of God. At the end of this scripture passage, verse 41, it says the disciples turn to each other and go, Who is this? Who is this? He does care and what a lot of faith he has. And so if Jesus doesn't expect the disciples to call down the waves, if he, he doesn't expect them to walk out across the water, what is he asking? When he asks their, this question about their lack of faith, what is it that he's actually wanting? Well, I think that what he's actually wanting is for us to lean into our fears, to acknowledge them, to be honest with ourself and with those that we care about and acknowledge our fear. This makes me afraid. I'm fearful about whatever, fill, fill in the blank. But then he wants, as our faith develops, us to be able to stand in the midst of that fear and call it down. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of Christ who lives in us, and the power of bringing those fears to the light. See, fear is fueled by the way we keep it a secret, by the way that we hide it. When we face our fear and when we bring it into the light, we take away its hold on us. We take away its grasp on our life. And you know what? When we do that, when we do that, when we step up in that way, people will say of us, who is that? Who is that that faces so courageously the challenges and the fears and the doubts and the struggles in their life? Who is it that does that with such grace and peace? And we'll say, it's not me. It's not by my power. It's not by my might. But it's by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in me because of Jesus Christ. I think that actually is what Jesus is after on this boat ride. Because, folks, Jesus does care. He's already in the boat with us. He's already with us every day of our lives. We don't have to focus on the fear. We can focus on the fact that Jesus is in the boat with us. And if he is with us, we don't have to fear. Now that doesn't mean that Jesus is going to always do what we want. That's not his role. That's not his job to meet our expectations. But we can be at peace. What have I to fear? What have I to dread when I'm leaning on the everlasting arms? Let us pray. Precious God, you, uh, you work so hard to get our attention. And sometimes we, we just have a hard time grasping it. We have high expectations of what you're going to do for us. And I pray, God, that uh, you'll help us with that. Help us more and more as our faith grows to turn to you, to trust in you, to relax with you, to be, to be at peace and not 
turned upside down with every wind that blows and every branch that breaks. But God, help us to live in a way, in a, a mode of peace. Help us to be honest about our fears. Help us to bring them to the light. Help us not be ashamed to share those with people that we love and care for. God, guide us this day. I pray for folks right now who are struggling, who are fearful of something that's going to happen this week or, or, or soon. God, I just pray that you'll give them a peace. Let them focus not on that, but on you. Let them focus on the reality that you are in the boat with us, wherever that takes us, however big the storm might be. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.